What is HDCD? Hmm. Yeah, I actually get asked that more often than, uh, than I would have thought. But this question comes from Martin in Sweden. And Martin writes, Hey Paul, I have a couple of CDs that I especially like for both sound and music. Uh, for example, Wrecking Ball with Emmylou Harris, and it's an HDCD. So the problem is that I don't have an HDCD player and I'm really interested how it sounds with an HDCD decoder. I don't want to buy an old CD player. Can a modern DAC read this format? Well, um, uh, yes and no. So let's, let's back up a little bit. HDCD came about, uh, I think in the mid 90s, and it stands for High Definition Compatible Disc. It was invented by uh, a couple of guys, Flash Flommer and Keith Johnson. Uh, Keith Johnson, you might know from reference recordings. Flash Flommer does work for oh, Spectral, and he's a pretty, he, he's, he's a terrific engineer, and, and just, you know, th those are some really smart guys. Uh, I think he did, you know, Spectral stuff. Anyway. They came up with an idea of how to <clears throat> basically take the least significant bit. So in a CD, we have 16 bits, right? And those bits tell us how much dynamic range is possible within a piece of music, right? So with 16 bits, you've got 96 dB of dynamic range. So from the loudest, uh, from the loudest to the softest, uh, you've got this range of like 90, 60 dB, which is huge, right? And so they wanted to go for another 60 dB so they could have a 20 bit, which I don't know how much that is. That's well over 100. So greater dynamic range. So how are they going to do that, right? Because they had to come up with something that was compatible with all CD players, and HD CDs still are, and then come up with this new... HDCD, I don't want to call it a trick because it was actually, it was pretty clever. So basically what it did is use the least significant bit. So out of the 16, the most important bit is that top bit where it's, you know, like, whoa, it's really super loud and less loud. And then at the very bottom down here in the noise where, you know, it's at where the, the softest parts are, that's called the least significant bit. And what they do is they mess around with that bit and uh, they dither it. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I, I used to know a lot because we were one of the original HDCD licensees. See, back then, the guys who ran the business, um, gosh, Dave Fletcher and, um, oh gosh, why? see, I'm getting old. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. I, I have, I remember formula. I remember circuits like they were etched into my brain, but people's names and stuff, and I can picture Robert, uh, Robert and Susan. It, anyway, um, they, uh, he, he, he ran Soda. That was the turntable company. And they were sort of the business end of that. And they went out and sold it. And they made a special chip. It was an HDCD chip. And it was a pretty big deal. I think the company is called Pacific Microsonics. So that's sort of the history behind it. And, it. and it worked. I mean, it gave you a bit more. They, they used a number. It wasn't just the dithering. It had some limiting and some expansion and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and it all happened in that least significant bit, right? The thing is, most CD players today don't decode HDCD. Ours doesn't. I mean, it's, I don't think there are that many... Uh, discs out there. And, you know, you you have to have, I think, uh, didn't uh, micro, Microsoft bought the company in 2000, maybe? I don't know. Got rid of it in 2015. They're not paying attention to it anymore. It's it, <laughs> HDCD is about as important to Microsoft as SACD is to Sony, which is not at all, right? Which kind of a shame, especially on SACD, because you know how much I love SACD. Okay. So, if I remember correctly, if you play a 
HD CD on a CD player that does not have the HD CD decoding engine in it, you get a little bit of distortion. You lose that last bit. But honestly, I that is so down in the noise, down in the weeds, I don't think you're ever going to hear it. So I, honestly, uh, while you won't hear the benefits of the extra 6 dB for 20 bit, you, uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're missing much. And part of the reason for that is most recording engineers and mastering engineers don't take advantage of the, of the 96 dB worth of dynamic range they have in the first place. Now reference recordings, Keith Johnson and those guys, oh, now those are some of the most dynamic recordings on the planet. And they did take advantage of it, but you know, that's just one small company. So hope that answers your question. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow.